saying to you. It's yelling loud to you. You gotta make them first steps. And you gotta read, get in that book. Open it up. Don't play with it. Because don't play with your soul. That's don't right. play with your life. It's important to you, right? Because you don't want to be one of those that is gnashing their teeth in the last day. Tell me, damn, I, I, I talked to them brothers and, and damn, I should have listened. I should have gotten the word. I should have got my soul right. I should have got my mind right while it was yet still time. Because there's a place, there's a time for repentance. It's a time period and it's going to run out. So you got to do what's necessary, but you got to keep the commandments. You got to read and you got to study. You got to do what's right. You got to come back to the Lord. Say, hey, I ain't going to hold you. I ain't going to beat you down with them scriptures, man. You know what I'm saying? You got a precept, bring out your precept. Book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 3. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And we all know the righteousness to keep the most out of God. So, it's like, so you uh so how long you been knowing you as an Israelite? Uh, about eight months. Eight months. That's eight months too long, bro. For you not to keep God's commandments. You know what I'm saying? Like he when he just read to you Sirach 5 and 7, right? Where it said, Don't tarry me, don't take your time to get to God's commandments. It said, because in your security, God can judge you. He can take you out. Because right now. You, you know, right now you in sin, right? Yep. Right. So by you being our brother, that's why we that's why we got to rebuke you. You know what I'm saying? We see, every time we see you, and you ain't got on friends, let's get number 1538 real quick. Number 1538. Every time we see you, you when we see you in sin, we got we got to call it out. That's what, that's what scripture calls love. You know? It's only new, brother. It's the only new. <laughs> oh, I mean, enlighten me. Enlighten me. Tell okay. Me. All right. I'm a Satanist. You're a Satanist. Now, I, I grew up in church. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very familiar with scripture. I don't claim to know it all. But uh, I have a a familiarity mm -hmm. with scripture. Uh -huh. uh, I never could buy into the white Jesus deal. Um, I know that Jesus was black. His disciples were you know, black. Mm -hmm. um, I did some research and found out, you know, the further back in history you go, the darker they get, right. kind of thing. So, um, but it's just, and maybe it's the, the white Christianity mm -hmm. that I've been, you know, indoctrinated with that I reject so much. Right. Um, but there are also there are some things in my life that I don't want to get, you know, rid of. You don't want to get rid of. Honest, honest, honest to God. That's, that's honest truth. Okay. Um, and so, to walk with Christ would mean that I would have to give up those, those, those things. Yeah. So why continue to do that? God forgive me when I know I'm just going to go right back to doing it. So, so that's, right. a, that's a personal choice. Okay, so let me ask you this. Yeah. Uh, I ain't. Let me ask you this. Uh, what do you get from being the Satan? Like what? It, it, it's like this. I'm gonna give you an example. Like we serve the God of the Bible because we know that He's the God of all. We know that he's the almighty God. And what we get from that is, there's no other God above him. You know what I'm saying? He gives us power, he gives us strength, and he has given us, if you do this, your your, your, your reward is this. So what would be the purpose of being a Satanist? What, 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 what do you get from that? Self-gratification. Okay. Uh, the ego. Um, the fulfillment of ego. Okay. So all the things that you strive against, that when you do or when you say, you're like, oh, dang, oh, dang, I got to get over it. I don't have to worry about that. Now, I say that knowing I don't have to worry about it now. Mm -hmm. All right? But you know later, it's, 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 it's yes. coming. Okay. Yes, I do. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you this. So when you say you're a Satanist, does that mean that you worship Satan? Worship Satan. Satan is your God. Absolutely. Yes. All right? So... Do you know that Satan worships God? So you know Satan serves God. So you serve somebody that serves God. You serve a servant. I serve a servant. Do you know how crazy that sounds? Yeah. <laughs> Especially knowing what I know. Okay. Good thing. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 15. 
Verse 14, Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city, for without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Which one of those would you fall into? Uh, sorcerer, idolater, whoremonger. Those three. So, uh, okay. Let's bring that out in Hebrews 10 real quick. It's the book of Hebrews, chapter 10 and verse 26. For if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. You know what that means? Yes. What does it mean? All right, so I know that Christ, his death on the cross, paid for my sin. Therefore, we no longer have to do the sacrificing of animals. Uh, um, his sacrifice, his, his, his blood is sufficient for all time. Mm -hmm. Therefore, by knowing that and rejecting that, I got nothing else. So, you're willing to sacrifice yourself for eternity for gratification now, temporary gratification. That is essentially what I'm saying. I don't know if he makes it. I know he's a, I know he's a Satan bomb. Man. So, all right. So, all right. So, so you know. So, so go to Hebrews ten and thirty-one. Go to verse thirty-one. Uh, verse thirty-one. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So, when when God puts judgment on us, right? It. It's a chance that that judgment I ain't gonna say it's a chance. Uh, most likely that judgment ain't gonna be a, a walk in the park. It ain't gonna be a piece of cake. Um, by you knowing what you're supposed to do and you sacrificing doing what's right for self gratification right now or temporary gratification, should I say? You 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 lining yourself up for a judgment that will not be a walk in the park. Um, and you cool with that. But I mean, if you cool with that, hey, I can't but help but be cool with it. You see what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, somebody get Ezekiel 3 and uh, 18. So you have, you have the job that you want. Your, your, your life is above average, you know, there's no suffering, no affliction, no pain. That, that would be ironic to think that life can go, that you can live life okay. in this realm without any of that. But you know, in the kingdom of heaven, there's none of that. Rather to suffer any damn way, it's just gonna be destroyed anyway. Because I 
couldn't conquer my, my, my self desires and lust on this earth. I don't think I don't think myself being that big of a person. Because the Lord said that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. If I subdue myself here, you know, I'm gonna suffer anyway. I, should, I might as well subdue my own lust here so that I can live eternally in riches and wealth and in glory in the next life. That's all that you you ain't really gotta think about that. Understand, like, do you really understand what the consequences of your actions are? Uh, second death? Yes. Destroying of my soul? You know what it's going to be like? You have any idea? Back in the what I know what scripture says. That the worm, the worm, die of not. Yeah, it's kind of easy. The worm, everlasting formula. I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a free soap. I'm going to get a second essence. Uh, chapter 9, uh, I'm going to start at verse 10. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me, and they that have loathed my law while they yet had liberty, and when, and when, and when as yet place of repentance was opened unto them, understood not but despised it, the same must know it after death by pain. Say that, brother. Yeah. Okay, I think and, it's good. And, and, and I'm gonna tell you this. Bro. I'm gonna tell you this. It's really scary for us, you know, you saying that. You know what I'm saying? Because what, unfortunately, what has happened is that we've lost our fear of God. You know what I'm saying? That's a terrible thing. When you say you're a Satanist, most of our people are Satanists. They just mask Christianity, you know what I'm saying, as a mask, but really they serve Satan too. You know what I'm saying? That's why we out here trying to fish our people out of the realm that they're serving us for our Satan. You know what I'm saying? But it's a scary thing. Give me uh, give me uh, give me Matthew 16 and 23. Give me Romans 12 and 2 or 3. Matthew 16 and 23. Give me a uh, Romans 12 and verse 2. Right? It's a scary thing, brother. And we love you, brother. That's why we're trying to fish you back. You know what I'm saying? From, from the stronghold that you're in as far as Satan. You know what I'm saying? We love you, brother. That's why we still dealing with you. We out here for you. And it was not a coincidence that you came by the man of the Lord today and you were curious, man. That's the Lord calling for you. Somebody else give me Isaiah 32. Right? Who was that? Matthew 16 and 23 and give me Isaiah 30 and 20. Right? The book of Matthew chapter 16 verse 24. Then it said, Yahweh shall unto his disciples. So this is Christ talking to his disciples, right? Read. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. So you got to deny yourself, brother. You got to deny yourself. Right? This is this is the Lord calling you to deny yourself. You gotta deny your desires. Right? And stand for what's right in the last days. We don't. And take up his cross and follow me. You gotta take up your cross and follow him. Do you have any children, brother? Yeah. You have children? So what kind of example are you setting for your children being a sinless game? Because this this isn't about you. Just you. This is about the people. Can tell me your name again? Yes. Mr. Justin? Jesse, this is the people that look up to Jesse as well. It's children that look up to you. You gotta be a light unto them. Bring it out. You gotta be some positivity unto them. You can't just live for yourself, brother. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing. And again, this is out of love because we love you. The scriptures say, um, um, open rebuke is better than secret love. That's Proverbs 24 and 7. Right? So we out here because we love you, King. We out here because we love our people. This is the hood. You know what I'm saying? And we only get maybe five people that may stop by in, in, in three, four hours, but we cool with them because they heard these words, right? We don't know that thing. Verse 25. The book of Matthew chapter 16, verse 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Uh -huh. If you will save your life, you're going to lose your life at the end of the day. 
That's what the brother was, the brothers were just bringing out. If you save this life here, you're gonna lose it. You're gonna lose eternal life, right? We don't. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. So we're, we left our life for God, brother. It's desires and things in this world that we still love to do. That's right, right? But we left that for God, for our children. You know what I'm saying? Because our children need to see a man of God. You understand? Because men of God aren't at a, at a, at a, at a, um, they, 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 they aren't something that's popular in this world. You understand? So you're not just doing this for yourself, King. You're doing this for your children. You're doing this for your nieces, your nephews, so on and so forth. And, and again, we're telling you this because we love you, King. Read what you got. And hey, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity, and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. That's right. But thine eyes shall see thy That's teachers. Right. And you see your teachers before they you this day, King. That's right. You see your teachers before you this day. And we out here again, I want to emphasize that. We out here because we love you. Right? Read on. Verse 21. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, This is the way. What the Lord said. This, this is, is the way. way. What the Lord said. This, this is, is the, the way. way. The Lord said, This is the way. Right? This is the way to eternal life. Give me John 14 to 6 rules. Read on. Walk ye in it when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. Right, so the woman said, walk this path, brother. You gotta walk this path, brother. You know what I'm saying? Because you 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 think, I'm not sure, I, you know, I know you said you understand the concept of what's gonna happen in the end, but brother, it ain't what you think. That's gonna be a painful day, right? It's gonna be a real painful day. You gotta develop your fear of the Lord that day. Read that. This is the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6. Uh -huh. Yahweh shall I say it unto him, I am the way. What the Lord say? I, I am, am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Somebody give me Hosea, verse 6. So Hosea 6 and 1. So the Lord said, nobody cometh to the Father but by me. Hosea 6 and 1. All right? So again, brother, you got to come back to the way, the truth, and the life. Because again, brother, that's a, 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 Right? Give me a book uh, 2 and 30, somebody. Somebody got Hosea 6 and 1? Bring it up. It's the book of Hosea, chapter 6 and verse 1. Come and let us return unto the Lord. What the Lord say? Come, Come and, and let, let us return, return unto the Lord. Lord. Read. For he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will he will bind us up. Right? So the Lord said, Come and let us return unto the Lord. Right? Because he will heal us, brother. And that's what you need, King. You need some healing. Right? You got to get your spirit clean. Right? Watch this. Baruch 2 and 30. It's the book of Baruch. Chapter 2 and verse 30. Give me that in arms. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. In the land of your captivity, you're going to remember yourself. You a king, bro. You know what I'm saying? Satan is, you know what I'm saying? That's living life as a peasant right as a beast but you a king you a priest i see god in you when i look at you brother but you lost the ability to see god in yourself you understand what i'm saying you lost the ability to see christ in yourself brother you gotta come home king right you gotta come home you got that king it's the book of psalm chapter 119 and verse 9 wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word Right, so you got to take heed to the word of God. That's what's going to cleanse you up. As you keep the commandments of God, the Lord is going to dwell with you. Right? He's going to go. Go ahead. Let me ask you this. Do you want to be cleansed? Right now, though. You don't want to be cleansed. I used to be. You, you used to want to be clean? Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is you you let, uh, you know that Satan was a liar from the beginning. Right? Right. He was a liar and a deceiver from the beginning. Right. So you said you willingly fell into, in, into. I didn't fall. You you I, I willingly, you willingly that 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 is a fall. 
I mean, okay, you yeah. willingly fell into the ignorance and the bliss. Or the, what they say that uh, ignorance is bliss. Hey, brother. Not ignorance, though. Yeah. What you, you, the, the bliss, the, the, the bliss of deception. You, you, you wanna, you, you wanna be deceived. You wanna, you wanna, you, you like the lie. Yeah. You like this, like, like, I gotta add. We don't, we don't always speak people every day. We, we all just voluntarily, just willingly. You know what I'm saying? Willingly, not openly. So they'll say, so I do have some questions. Do you consider yourself, um, basically, a regular Christian? You know, so you, you don't see the I'm difference. Not, I'm not a so what's the difference? I'm not a Christian anymore. My question is, what's the difference between you and a regular Christian? Uh, the difference is this: regular Christians are okay. Most of them are very ignorant. Most of them are very ignorant as to what their what what their practices are and where they take root. A lot of Christians don't know that Christmas is a pagan holiday, Easter is a pagan holiday, Jesus wasn't born on the actual 20th or 25th. A lot of them don't know any of that. All right. So um, a lot of them also, they don't study scripture. They, and most of what they're taught is whitewashed. Um, meaning that it's all gonna point them back to Hey, white, brother, y'all need to come get this Jesus. word, too. Okay. Um, hey, brothers. That's what a regular Christian is, typically. And I am not that. Basically, what it sounds um, like, I want to make sure I hear you, make sure I understand you right. The real difference between you and a regular Christian is you know what, what you're doing, and they don't know what it is they're doing. Y'all doing the same thing, it's just that you know and they don't know, right? Well, essentially, I guess, yeah. Out of Proverbs 15 and 10. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 15 and verse 10. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way, and he that hateth reproof shall die. Brother, you gotta, you gotta come back and live on this. You gotta come back to the life, right? You live in a, you, you live in a life that's destined for death. You understand what I'm saying? And again, you ain't gonna find out too many people that's gonna tell you. I bet your friends gonna tell you the brothers that you hang around because they don't really love you. They love you being in a low estate because right now, what's going on? What's going on is that you 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 you're, you're, you're cool with living a low life, bro. But again, I'm telling you, you're a king, brother. The king's gotta be a different. Right? Watch this. Read. Give me Second Peter. Tell us what the book of Second Peter, chapter two. Verse 21, for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. So the Lord said it, it will be better. So the punishment is actually going to be worse. I think that's what follows that. Right. For sure, man. So, so the scriptures say it will be better if you had not even known the way of righteousness than after to learn the way of righteousness and then go the other way. So let me ask you this question. Go ahead. Revelation 12 and 9, right? You know that Christ is a so-called black man. So how would that be the how would following him be a um, a way of righteousness? I'm, I'm, I'm asking because they, they use the same for sure, for sure, for sure that's so that is what I have walked away, away from because that's what I have rejected. I'm with you, I'm with you, King. And, and, and this is a heavy point. This is a heavy point you make. Because what has happened to the majority of our people. This right here isn't even believable. You know what I'm saying? And what's happening at the church is, is not even believable. And what, what has happened is that our people have correlated the lies with the Bible. They're going to give it all up all together. But the, but the Bible condem condemns this wicked devil, man. The Bible condemns the people who push that own our people in slavery. Right? So Satan truly has deceived the whole world. Give me that in Revelation 12 and 9. Book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, 
which deceiveth the whole world. So this image has deceived the whole world. Do you know who that is, brother? Who is that guy? You know the history of this painting? Right, so this painting, right, so, right, so this painting, painting was painted by uh, Leonardo da Vinci during the time of the Renaissance. This is Cesare Borgia. He's the son of Pope Alexander the Sixth of Rome. Right, he was a homosexual. You know what I'm saying? Right, into incest, into God dog on all. I think he married his sister. You know what I'm saying? So he was a wicked demon, but, but these are the customs of the so-called white man. And what happened is before you, are you familiar with the dark ages? Yeah. The dark ages was during the time that we ruled this earth, right? And then the white, white man conquered us and that was the time of the renaissance or the rebirth, right? And this is what the image that they brought. They brought this image right here and the cross and they pushed Christianity on our people, forced Christianity on our people. And now, like you said, we willingly celebrate Christianity as far as the customs and the traditions and things like that, and we turn our back on the ways of God, right? So this is what we out here to do. We out here to fish our people, you know what I'm saying? But again, brother, you know too much not to be following the Lord. You're gonna be held accountable in that day when you stand before the throne, right? Another thing, like, uh, between you and a Christian, I'm gonna be real, you worse than a Christian because you know better. Christians actually believe what they're doing is right. And you know what you're doing is wrong, right? And you said you cool with it. Somebody pull Zechariah uh, 14 and 12. Go ahead, bring it up here. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 14, verse 12. And this shall be the plague. Stop right there real quick. So according to your understanding, when Christ comes back, what is he coming back to do? Judge. Come back to judge, right? All right. So book of Zechariah chapter 14, verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Now, that's talking about heathens, but it's also talking about our own people that uh, willingly go against the word of God. Right? Their flesh shall consume away while the while they stand upon their feet. So, there's gonna be nuclear destruction, right? And those of our people, somebody grab Zechariah 13 and 8. Those of our people that willingly turn their back on the word of God. Remember, remember I was saying a little while ago, it's, it's not gonna be a, a cakewalk. There's gonna be suffering going on. Somebody grab Zechariah 13 and 8 real quick before you finish that. You got this is the book of Zechariah. Chapter 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. So two parts got to be cut off and die. All right, go back to uh, Zechariah uh, 14. Oh yeah, go ahead, finish, finish it up. The book of Zechariah chapter 14, middle part of verse 12. Start at the top. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their hole, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. The only way that can happen is by the way of that's, 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 But what it's saying is, you're gonna stand on your feet, and I'm not saying you per se, because you might get your life together. Uh, people are gonna be standing on their feet and gonna be burnt up to the point where, before they even drop, they skin, their tongue, everything else is gonna burn up off of them. Standing right here in the mirror, right? Zechariah chapter 14, verse 13. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them, and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. See, before the Jeremiah 16 16, it says God will send many fishermen. Right now we fishermen. But then it also says, matter of fact, bring it out. Somebody get Jeremiah 16 16. Bring out what you got, Ken. 
This is the book of 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Uh -huh. You said you had a question? Oh, I said, that was like Absolutely. You said the elements are going to consume away. Right? It's more than that. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Nuclear destruction. Right? The only way to get up out of that and to avoid that is by coming back to God's law of faith and commandments. See, this is the thing. Based on what you were saying is you enjoy your life right now. Right? See, at the end of the day, we also enjoy our life. The same, it's like, I ain't gonna say the same pleasures, but we also have pleasure in what we're doing. We have pleasure with our life. See, people think that when you, when you start serving God, you gotta stop having fun. No, you just live by certain stipulations. Now, you can, you can obey the laws of this land, but you can't obey the laws of God. And there's thousands of, of laws of the land. There's only 613 laws of God. You see what I'm saying? Like, you can't commit murder according to the laws of the land. Same thing with the laws of God. There's a whole lot that, that, that is, is similar to each other. But you saying you will you willing to risk your soul, your life, and everything, and like you said, your children. You see what I'm saying? For just for temporary gratification. Right? Bring it out Jeremiah 16, 16. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 16, verse 16. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters. So so right now we're fishermen. But in the day of the Lord, we're gonna be hunters. We're gonna be the same people that's gonna be hunting our own people as, as well as heathens. We're gonna be the ones that's, that God's gonna send out to deliver. Uh, for, grab Luke, grab Luke 19, 27. We're gonna be the ones that's sent out to gather these people up, right? I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them said, from every mountain. We gonna hunt them from every mountain. And from every hill, and out of the holes of the rocks. It's gonna be people running from us because they they gonna know what we about. Right now, this is a time of this is a time of, of gathering our people together and fishing our people, bringing our brothers and sisters back back to the truth. But he said he's gonna turn us into hunters in that day. Bring up what you got, gang. This is the book of Luke, chapter nineteen and verse twenty-seven. But those my enemies, which would not that I should reign over them. So when you when you don't follow God's laws, statutes, and commandments, and don't come back to the truth, you you you're, you're willingly turning yourself, making yourself an enemy of God. So this is Christ talking. He said, those are my enemies, what? But those my enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. So in that day when we hunt us, that's what we're going to be doing, right? Right? So at the end of the day, bro, it's like, we your brothers. And somebody, somebody grab Matt, uh, first, first John 5 and 3. We your brothers. And we want you to come back to the understanding of who you are and don't and stop willingly sinning. You see what I'm saying? It's not what you think. You don't, you don't have to walk around like how Christianity taught you that you gotta walk around being like. We seem like we, we regular dudes, you see what I'm saying? We are regular dudes, you know? We, we, we don't, we don't uh, uh, commit all, we don't commit the sins uh, of the world, but we regular dudes, you see what I'm saying? We obey God's commandments, we wear fringes at the bottom of our shirt, you see what I'm saying? We treat our brothers and sisters with respect, you know what I'm saying? But we regular dudes. Christianity have, have you believing and have you thinking that you can't have no fun, can't be yourself no more. Your whole personality is over with. No, right? Bring that first John 5 or 3. This is the book of First John chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. It said his commandments are not grievous. So the, so the point of it is, it's not hard to do this, right? But at the end of the day, it's your decision. It's your decision on what you're going to do. You know what I'm saying? But as, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That's right. Right? That's right. So uh, you got any questions, King? Mm -hmm. okay. Okay.